All right, so have I got a story for you guys today. So my brother has been building a 400 Chevy for the last few months uh, in his garage. And it's not like a crappy motor that's all thrown together like junkyard style or anything. Uh, it's brand new. He actually had the block board out and he's got some pretty nice internals in it and stuff. Uh, it's got world product heads on it. It's a pretty nice motor. So I, don't know, I guess it's been a couple weeks ago now. He decided he had it ready to start up, right? So we took it to my buddy's house and my buddy made a like an engine startup stand out of some scrap metal and like parts of an old lawnmower and stuff. So uh, pretty awesome. So um, it was kind of convenient because you can start the motor on there. Something happens, you know, it's not in your car. Uh, you can, you know, mess with it or you don't have to take it back out of your car, whatever. So uh, in the end, good thing we did this. But so we put it on the stand and uh, as you can see from the video clips when I put up here, it, uh, it actually started and ran. It had a little bit of difficulty starting, but not like you'd think for the problem that it had. Uh, but once he got it running, you know, it, it ran, we ran it up to like, you know, we set the timing and then ran it up to like, you know, 2500 RPM and it ran like that for like 20 whole minutes. And then it started getting a little warm and since he uh, has bored over this block, it's a 400, so uh, you don't want to get those hot at all because of what it is. Um, so we idled it down, um, tried to get to cool off a little bit. And uh, we started noticing this little like rattle noise and uh, got out the little stethoscope deal, um, kind of listening around, you know, and uh, determined that it was one of the lifters on the, I guess it would have been the driver's side of the motor. Uh, it was kind of making a little bit of noise, so we determined that was the area for that noise and uh, ended up shutting it down and pulling the valve cover. And we were looking at the, at the rockers, you know, we just figured one of them came a little loose or whatever. Uh, found the one that was like, you know, way looser than the other ones and got to looking at it and we thought that it had stuck a valve because the the valve was, you know, like down a little bit below the, the rocker, like it wasn't actually touching the rocker, so it was, the spring was slightly compressed, so we're like, well, that sucks, you know, I mean, he didn't actually have the heads rebuilt, he only lapped the valves and stuff, but, um, you know, valve getting stuck in the guide, maybe it got a little warm and, you know, that just happens sometimes, so we're like, okay, you can tear it apart, maybe, you know, hone it out, clean it, and get that fixed, no big deal. But uh, later when he took the exhaust manifold off, and he looked inside the, the chamber area, top of the valve there, he seen some yellow rag, and at that point realized he had left the three rags he'd stuffed in the intake when he was messing with the carburetor in the intake. So uh, what happened with that was he had to come and borrow my carburetor off my car to get this motor to run. And um, he has, uh, his intake is not a square bore, I guess you'd say. So he had like a little adapter plate, like kind of like a little riser or whatever. He had to put on there to, for my carburetor to work and everything. And the studs that he had weren't quite long enough. So he, he uh, had the carburetor off and he stuffed like three rags in there. There was like two microfibers and like a blue kind of shop rag, similar to the red ones, but it was blue. Uh, so he'd stuff those in the intake just in the top there so nothing would fall down or whatever while he was, you know, sorting out the spacer and the carburetor deal. Um, but at some point, you know, he had the, the plate on and off a couple times in the carburetor and he was testing out like different some stud lengths because one of them was too short. So at some point he got the correct length of stud in there with the carburetor on and then, I don't know, got distracted or, or something happened and the carburetor just ended up getting bolted on the motor. So, with the rags underneath it still. And uh, but somehow, you know, got it to still start and run and it didn't really sound weird. I mean, uh, you kind of listen to the audio a little bit. You notice there's a little bit of popping and stuff at first, but uh, we initially just figured that was a timing thing. We got it timed in and then it, it was fine. It ran good. Didn't really seem to be an issue, but... Uh, as far as the aftermath goes, I got some photos here, so you'll see like the the yellow microfiber actually sucked down like kind of into the chamber and it got stuck under the valve, so that's why we thought the valve was stuck. So there's this yellow rag was just, you know, wrapped around, built up into the valve stem and everything and um, stopping it from closing. And then it also, like the piston had just been coming up and just smashing 
on that rag too and it actually uh it kind of got hot and melted so the rag was almost like plastic feeling so it's kind of solid after you know it got burned and smashed a bunch uh and uh the blue rag just kind of got like stuck under a valve it didn't really break down and get smashed up like the microfiber did uh and the green rag didn't actually make it into a chamber anywhere like you know we were actually able to pull that out of the in from uh one of the runners out of the intake um but after you know pulling the heads and everything my brother went back through and measured i guess it'd be like the piston quench sort of or you know like the height of the pistons when they came up and the one that had the yellow rag had a little bit of a it didn't come up as far right so um he took that stuff he had to tear the motor all back down which really sucks it was new and it's been balanced and everything so he took a bunch of the parts out to the machine shop and uh got to find out whether uh either he bent a rod or uh there's a potential where like the wrist pin had a lot of pressure on it and maybe it tweaked the piston a little bit or you know something got bent there as well so we don't really know for sure on that yet but uh you know i'll keep you posted on that so uh I mean, I've heard of this happening in the past. I've read online a little bit about it, like, but usually people will leave like a blue shop towel or something in there and that'll just kind of like burn through and I uh, didn't really hear of anyone having like a super issue because of it. The, those really popular like red shop towels, sometimes those get left in there, I've heard, but uh, I mean, those are not much better than really like a blue paper towel almost. And they, I've heard of them actually burning out, you know, like, um, but, the microfibers, not so much. They like turn to plastic and build up in there and just cause all kinds of carnage almost. So uh, anyways, just want to share this with you guys. Um, you know, maybe just be a reminder to pay attention to stuff. You know, if you're, you know, if you have like an air filter off and you're doing something and you stuffed a rag in your, in your inlet tube, you know, don't forget about it. Take it out of there because that can suck through or, or if you're in a similar situation, you've stuck a rag in your intake or whatever make sure those get taken out uh i've heard of people leaving rags inside the valley too under the intake uh i don't know if that would cause like as much issue i mean you know it could be built up in your lifters and stuff but i guess just you know pay attention to stuff maybe it'll just, you'll remember this video one day and be like oh yeah and save yourself some some hassle so anyways i'll uh catch you guys another time and hopefully you find this interesting and uh see you later